Well, it's great to see some signs of spring about. Look at these little ones. I love that on my drive when I can spot things are starting to be slightly less brown from the winter and we're starting to get those little bit of greenery coming through. I really love spring, so um, I'm on the lookout for all the signs of it. Wow, can you hear that? The wind is really up. Might be able to see it in the trees just up here. It may not be roaring. I've got a microphone on because I knew it would be a bit windy. But that's lucky because that's what I wanted to talk about. Welcome to Everyday Athlete. My name's Rachel Andrews and this week I'm talking about why I'm interested in the wind when it comes to swimming. Now, something I wanted to mention about uh, last week's video, if you remember, I had a bit of a mishap with my GoPro by um, driving off with it on the roof and it fell onto the motorway uh, slip road. Uh, but I did manage to retrieve it because there was not much traffic about. Only the screen protector was damaged, although it did completely save the back screen of my GoPro. Well, I went back online uh, onto XClear's website um, and I found out that it had a lifetime guarantee on it. So I contacted them and said, hey, uh, wondering if I can claim on this, this is what happened. And they said, yeah, sure. And all I had to do was pay for postage. So the 20 quid it cost me to get my screen protectors was uh, absolutely cracking. Not only did it save my GoPro, I also got another one just for the cost of postage. Massive thumbs up to Xclear for that. Uh, I've got a link in the description below to the Xclear hydrophobic um, screen protectors that I use. Uh, it is an affiliate link and uh, I do get a small amount of money if you buy one as well. But I cannot recommend them highly enough. They, uh, they stop all the drips off my camera and <laughs> apparently they save it if you uh, chuck your GoPro off the roof at 50 miles an hour as well. Before I choose where I'm going to swim of a day, I always take a look, number one, at what the wind's going to be doing, because it's massively going to impact how my swim pans out and what kind of a day I'm going to have. So swimming down here on the Solent, it's not such a big deal. It's really quite windy this morning, and I'll tell you how windy in a minute, I'll look it up on my phone. Because we've got the Isle of Wight over there, and as you can see, the wind direction is coming straight across from the island, that kind of acts as a big windbreak, so it protects the water within the Solent, so it never really gets super lumpy. Just a bit of bobbing about. For me, if I was doing a training swim, that would be a bit of an irritant, a bit more of a slog, but it's not gonna stop me actually doing it. Um, but if I was new into it and wanting to kind of just dip my toe in and really just get used to the, get used to swimming in the sea, a day like today might not be the one I want to choose. If I was down for a social swim with a friend, or I was coming down, as I said, just as a beginner, just to get used to swimming in the sea. Things that might affect how much I enjoy it would be the getting in part. That's gonna be a bit more abrupt than if you get in when it's nice and flat, where you can control the point at which your uh, vital bits get chilly. Um, the other thing is, as you're getting in, if you take your time, chances are you're going to get quite a bit colder because the wind is also blowing on you and that's pretty uncomfortable. Um, when you're in there, once you start swimming, as you turn to uh, speak to your friend, could be that you're getting a face load of spray. Um, so that can just be a little bit more than you're expecting. On a warm day, or uh, it's maybe about 10, 11 degrees at the moment, so it's not too bad, that might be fine, but it's also going to whip your voice away and be difficult for just that head up chatting type of swim. 
aside from the comfort of having a swim and being able to chat without getting a, a mouthful of salt water, there's a really serious side to this and that is the getting changed aspect. Making sure I've got somewhere out of the wind to get changed is critical for me. It's really important to be able to do that almost in peace. So here, if I came down to the sea, if I hadn't really thought about it and I came down and it was a situation where the wind was blowing in this direction, then I'd be looking for anywhere I could think of to get changed where I might be out of the wind. Perhaps ducking down below below here, but that's a bit, uh, bit of an effort really, isn't it? Just to try and stay under a meter and getting changed, but it does significantly alter how warm I'm feeling at the moment. But if I was to come down here for a swim today, I think I'd be looking at this house here as a possibility to change in the lee of, i.e. using that as the windbreak and me changing behind it. Um, which, depending on uh, the state of tide, might be an option, but I happen to know that it's quite shallow just there and I'd have quite a long walk out before I could even get, uh, get in and swim. So all in all, if I was coming in for a training swim or was coming down for a swim with a friend, I probably wouldn't pick here today because there's so many other choices. So as you can see, I've tucked in behind this building to try and get out of the wind a little bit, but I can feel, as you can see on my hair, the wind is swirling around the building. So even here might not be that great. And in particular, clambering up rocks after a swim is also not going to be that super. So if I was desperate for a swim, then maybe I'd come here and I'd do it. Uh, either that or I just chuck on a changing robe and leg it back up to my car to get changed. So I said I'd take a look at um, what the wind strength was. I'm going to be using, you might be able to see on here, I've, these are my weather apps, I'm going to be using Windy. It's also good on the website windy.com. So just opening that up now, I can see the wind strength looks pretty strong. And if I go in and I put in leap, which is where I'm at, I can see that at the moment it's 17 knots gusting 31, which is pretty windy to be honest. Um, and it's from the southwest direction, which is what we're expecting just there. So this is something that I always use with the uh, colors on there. It gives me a good indication. What I'm really looking for, for a flat day, it would be, you know, maybe sub three, four, five knots. That would be a really nice and flat one. And even in the southwest, that wouldn't matter. It might still be a little bit nippy, a little bit drafty as I was getting changed, but it wouldn't be anything that would affect my ability to swim or chat. So aside from the issue of comfort and being able to get changed in comfort, and also the ability to have a conversation without getting a mouthwash. There's other things to consider with the wind as well. So it obviously affects the water surface of your swim location and the bigger stretch of water it's got to come across, the bigger the effect it's gonna have. It will also have a decent effect if the wind is running against the tide. So if the tide is going in one direction um, and the wind is coming from the other, then it lifts up the surface and uh, makes it pretty lumpy. If you're on an exposed coastline, if the wind has been persistent for a length of time, then there may also be surf to contend with. So thinking about those conditions, surf being quite lumpy, a consistent wind, we can start to see actually there might be others that could be interested in our play area. So on a windy day, if you're in a location where um, there are other water sports taking part, then be really careful. In small surf, you might get bodyboarders and people just who might well be relatively inexperienced and may not have much directional stability 
when it comes to operating their toy or their tool of choice. The next thing we've got in bigger surf, obviously we've got surfers, we've got people on sit on top kayaks, um, we may even have kite surfers. All of these things are moving quite a lot quicker than we are and sometimes when it's windy you might find that you think your um, tow float is really annoying and actually I might not take it but on a windy day that is a really good time to have your tow float with you. I have made a video about how to control your tow float and I'll put a link to that in the description below. So think about who might not be able to see you. If there's even a little bit of lump it only needs to be you know a one foot wave and you're only intermittently visible as a swimmer. So think safety, think about where you're going to be swimming, think about how visible you're going to be and think about where you're going to get changed. As it happens, with wind in this direction and my hand nearly falling off, I'm not going to swim here today, I'm going to go for a swim in the river. Well, I just thought I'd pop down to Ealing to get a little look to see what it would have looked like had I wanted to swim here. In actual fact, as you can see from my damp hair, I've already been for my swim and I played it safe and went to the river. But actually, given how raging it was down at uh, Leap, it is pleasing to see that Ealing is completely flat. And in actual fact, From the state of my hair you can see not any wind on it at all because I'm in the lee of the land just like I was speaking about with that little house. So it worked out really well to take a look at windy.com to see the place you're thinking about going is the wind blowing onto the land or off of the land. If it's blowing off the land it can look as smooth as this. I hope you've enjoyed this week's video and that if you have you'll give it a like and drop me a comment tell me what you check before you go for your swim and I hope you'll join me next time and also become a subscriber by clicking on my face and dinging the little bell to know when the next one's out and I'll see you next time bye <laughs>